So let's continue with our proofs of the Pythagorean theorem. And mind you, there's hundreds of different proofs. But a few years before President Garfield became president of the United States, I believe the 20th president of the United States, he uh, ended up publishing his own original proof that takes into consideration trapezoids, which we've talked about in this class. So let's go ahead and see what Garfield was all about, President Garfield. Of course, he starts with a triangle, a right triangle, ABC, with the hypotenuse C, and he takes that triangle and he makes a copy of it. And he goes ahead and attaches them in a very interesting way. So he takes it, rotates it, and puts, of course, one down here. And then he takes another copy and tips it like that. And what he does is he makes the hypotenuses, hypotenuses face each other. Okay. Now, this ends up creating these two sides congruent. And he actually ends up connecting these two. And that forms this gray right triangle right here. Okay. Now this is a right angle. And then these two sides are congruent to each other. And of course, this hypotenuse of the gray triangle is bigger than the hypotenuse of the red triangle. So what we have going on here is pretty ingenious. Uh, you have a right triangle that he made a, a, another copy of. So he's got two of these red triangles. And then he goes ahead and makes it so that he can form another triangle. That was horrible. And then he forms a third triangle to kind of close a deal. And in the process, he actually makes a trapezoid. So it ends up being this shape right here. And he makes a claim that this pink trapezoid is made up of three shapes. It's made up of these two smaller congruent right triangles plus this special gray isosceles right triangle that he formed. Well, if we go what he, with what he's saying, then we need to find the area of this trapezoid. That would be the height, which is A plus B. And then there's B1 plus B2. So this is base 1. And here's base 2. And then divided by 2. That is the area of this trapezoid. And then we have two red triangles. They're 1 half A times B. And then we have the area of this triangle which is going to be one half C times C. It's already looking a little different than our previous uh, proofs. Uh, notice this time we don't have four triangles, we just have the two. And this gray one is different, so I have to do it separately. And usually we're used to C square because in the past we've been doing areas of squares, but this time we're doing areas of triangles and a trapezoid. Now, if we go ahead and, and see what we have here, you'll notice that there are uh, twos here on the denominator and a two here and a two here. So if I multiply everything by two, the entire thing, so multiply this by two, multiply this by two, multiply this by two, these will cancel out. And I don't have to worry about fractions. We've shown in previous videos how to find this. You FOIL or distribute. I'm going to get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. I invite you to view the previous video where we showed on the side in the left column how to get that. Over here I have 2ab and then I have c times c, that's c squared. Haha. -ha. And if you look at this 2ab and this 2ab here, we subtract this one from both sides. And we're left with a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which we can turn around, right? And we could put it as c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. And so we proved once again, or we should say President Garfield proved that you can be a president and actually be smart. Cool. This is something called a proof without words. And you're going to see, by the way, on the assignments that we do, that I'm going to have uh, various animations and pictures for you to view and to kind of uh, comment on your understanding as you prove the Pythagorean theorem. But in this particular case, this proof without words, the idea here is if you look at this picture 
and then you look at how it how it became how it became this picture then that's the proof and we don't actually need words all we got to do is look at it and we'll be like oh yeah that makes sense we're going to spend some time writing down some words or explaining you know verbally with some words so you understand what's going on but if you look at this long enough right you, you see that there's four triangles and there's four triangles over here as well and they're color coded and they got rearranged and moved around somehow but what's even more telling is are the white shapes so here is here is c squared right this white inside squared is a c squared this is an a squared and this is a b squared and notice something else the outside shape never changed this is this size right here this square is the same as this square and what this proof did is it took the triangles made them into rectangles moved them around the triangle shapes didn't change either in the process of doing that it created this square and this square so nothing in this total shape has changed except for the white shapes of the area however the area is still the same and so looking at this picture this is saying in here you have c squared if i rearrange the triangles i get an a squared and a b squared it's saying that this white shape is the same as these two white shapes combined that's pretty powerful okay now you're gonna want to probably pause rethink this rewatch it you might want to write it but let me summarize it again in case if you need it the picture on the left is made up of four triangles and in the inside there is a white squared c squared okay now if we don't change this shape at all or any shapes for that matter all we do is rearrange these same four triangles in such a way that they are arranged as you see to the right it'll leave this white area and this white area it has rearranged the white original shape into two smaller white shapes so this is showing that the original white square is the same as if you were to add these two shapes together please only problem for blank please this is your chance to write down words write down words write down words for your summary i kind of want you to get a feel for these proofs uh spoken by a different person and also see some other proofs that were done historically uh there are over 350 different proofs on the pythagorean theorem it's fascinating that uh, one of the most recent proofs uh, was found by by two teenage girls um, from down in the south and uh, it's actually really exciting as being really discussed and it's uh, worth a read and what's really cool is we don't really have too many uh, proofs of the Pythagorean theorem from um, females let alone teenagers let alone uh people from new orleans probably so pretty cool but i want you to go ahead and uh view this video on youtube so check it out and it's really, really it's short it's great it'll kind of put everything together for you euclid and spend some time summarizing your comfort level, you know, of your understanding on how to prove the Pythagorean theorem.